Hello friends, good morning. Today we'll uh, start the LT call flow process. I'll explain it end to end. So let's go understand the first step in the LT call flow. First of all, the UE sends a random access preamble uh, to the inode B. Uh, then the inode B gives a response to the UE by random access response. Then the third step is the UE sends the RRC connection request after getting the response from E node B. Then the E node B again after receiving the RRC connection request send RRC connection setup. Okay. So that is the random access and RRC setup part. After receiving the RRC connection setup from e node B, the UE then sends RRC connection setup complete message with a PDN connectivity request and attach request also. Then the e node B sends the initial UE message to the MME and switching gateway for PDN connectivity request and attach request. Then the MME and a switching gateway revert with a downlink NAS transport identity request after receiving the PDN connectivity request and attached request. The E node B after receiving the downlink, uh, downlink NAC, NAS transport from MME and switching gateway sends a downlink information transfer that is the identity request to the UE. After receiving the downlink uh, identity request from the node B, the UE then sends the identity response through uplink information transfer. And this uplink information transfer received from UE at the node B again sent towards MME and switching gateway for uplink NAS transport, okay, which contains the identity response from the UE forwarded by the inode B towards the MME and SZW switching gateway. Then the MME and switching gateway reverts with a downlink non-access datum transport that is the authentication request. Then the inode B forwards this message in the downlink information transfer for authentication request to the UE. The UE after receiving this authentication request sends the authentication response through uplink information transfer to e node b e node b again forwards the uplink nas transport information or the authentication response to the mme and switching gateway after that the uh, mme and switching gateway revert with the downlink nas transport security mode command and again the same message is forwarded to the ue from e node b the downlink information transfer that security mode command and the uplink information transfer is set up by the UE towards e node B for security mode complete okay so uh, uplink NAS transport again uh, after receiving from uh, e no, uh, you know uh, UE the e node B forwards this uplink NAS transport to the uh, MME and switching gateway for security mode complete okay then after receiving the security mode complete message at the MME and uh, switching gateway, downlink NAS transport or the ESM information request is sent to the e node B. And the e node B again forwards this information in the downlink information transfer for ECM information request to the UE. After receiving the ECM information request, the UE again sends through uplink information transfer that ESM information response to the e node B which is again forwarded from e node B towards MME and switching gateway through uplink NAS transport ESM information response this is all uh, called uh, if the UE uh, indicated uh, it has ESM information and again uh, we get a revert from MME and switching gateway that initial context setup request uh, active default EPSBR context request or attach accept from switching gateway and maybe towards e node B. 
then may not be sends the security mode command to the uh, UE the UE sends back security mode complete to inode B uh, then the inode B asks for UE capability inquiry then the UE capability information is sent from UE to inode B what class of UE and all this information so I hope it's clear till this point after the UE capability information received from uh, UE at the node B end, the UE capability information forwarded towards uh, the next level that is MME or switching gateway from e node B. Then uh, the RFC connection reconfiguration attach and accept it's sent from e node B towards the UE and the UE again sends back with RFC connection reconfiguration complete to the e node B. Then the initial context setup response is sent from e node B towards the MME and the switching gateway uplink information transfer happens attach you know uh, activate default EPS bearer context uh, accept then attach complete message from UE to e node B then e node B sends an uplink NAS transport activate default EPS bearer context accept and attach complete towards MME or the switching gateway. After this, downlink user data is sent from uh, switching gateway towards UE, and the UE again sends uh, uplink user data towards switching gateway. The UE information transfer also happened. The detached request initiated by the UE, uh, the same message. Uh, initiated by the UE sent to inode B and inode B forwards this information towards uh, you know MME and the switching gateway for uplink NAS transport detached request when the UE you know initiate for detach and we receive a downlink NAS transport detach accept from the MME and switching gateway to the node B inode B and inode B forwards the downlink information transfer with detach accept then downlink that transport information you know transport information is sent from a switching gateway and MME or detach request to the inode B inode B forwards the information to UE through downlink information transfer again for detach request and uplink information transfer detach accept is sent from UE to inode B then the inode B sends the uplink NAS transport or detach accept towards the MME and switching gateway. Then UE context release command is initiated by the MME and switching gateway to the inode B and inode B reverts back with uplink context release complete. So then only the inode B sends RRC connection release to uh, the UE. Uh, so that's all about uh, the call flow in uh, LT. I hope you understand a little bit uh, tough for the beginners. So you can repeat the uh, uh, repeat watching the video again and again because I have explained every message from where to where from UE to you know B and then you know B to MME or switching gateway and uh, uh, you know descending order also also. So we can uh, watch it again and again and uh, can get a little information of the LT call flow. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, in the next video we will come with some other call flows like uh, the pacing and other, other part of call flow. That's all for today. Keep watching, liking, sharing and comment in the video and please don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.